okay so in today's session we are going to uh, discuss about mapping okay and uh, from today we will uh, see how uh, we use the map editor for the data uh, transformation okay so so what is the data transformation and uh, why it is required once we understand that then only we will able to uh, able to understand uh, what is the significance of uh, map editor or uh, what is the significance of mapping right so in SI I mean uh, what happened to this? it's not working So, uh, so far we have learned uh, what all transport capabilities Sterling Integrator or SFG provides, right? And from today, we will uh, discuss about its uh, data translation or transformation capabilities, okay? So, before we go the, uh, into, uh, in, into, into that topic, let's just, let's, uh, for understand that what is the use of data translation and, and or why we need data transformation okay to understand this say suppose in your organization okay you have a sterling integrator or, or SI installed okay then you have an internal system mainframe system or SAP system uh, which uh, communicate with SI for the data and SI is your middleware right then you have external client right external partner you have external partner who send data to SI and then SI eventually send the data to SAP right now I'm not going to discuss about the board protocol and uh, all other details because we have discussed about that a lot okay so with uh, our current understanding we know we will or uh, we will able to enable our external partner to send data to SI or in, of, uh, in one of the mailbox in SI right now in real time there is one more challenge okay and that challenge is consider your sterling external external trading partner send data or has only capability to send data in XML format okay has capability to send data only and only in XML format. Okay, so but your internal system, SA, uh, SAP system, right? It needs data in EDA format, right? Or say suppose positional format. then how this communication will work even if you enable the enable some protocol and you enable this partner to drop the file XML file in one of the mailbox in SI it will not help if you send this XML data directly to SAP system because for SAP that is just a garbage right because SAP need the uh, data in EDI format okay it needs the data in the EDI format or it needs the data in positional file format or some other format. Okay. Or maybe in XML format only but different structure. Right. Then how you will deal with this kind of situation. Right. So you get XML data.
your partner sends you XML data, right? This is your XML data. This data is, I mean, you have the information. You have the information, but that information is of no use because, because uh, uh, it cannot be consumed by your end system. Okay, it's like, I mean, I know that you have a lot of knowledge, right? But uh, you understand only Chinese or, or you speak only Chinese, right? Now, I know you have the knowledge, I know you have the information, but I cannot consume it because I understand English only. I don't know what Chinese is, right? So if that is the scenario, I mean, this real world scenario that I'm uh, talking to you, you uh, understand Chinese, you speak Chinese, but I understand English or I speak only English. In that case, we need a translator, right? We need a translator or a person who can convert whatever you speak in the Chinese into English. If that can happen, then only the information that you have will be useful to me, right? So your map editor is that translator. Your map editor is that middleman that uh, has capability to translate Chinese into English or Hindi or Tamil or Telugu. Okay, and the map editor can translate vice versa as well. So when you will speak in English, it will translate that into Chinese and it will uh, and then we will use something to send it back to the Chinese person. Right. So this translation is very important. Okay, so your map editor uh, your map editor is the I mean, tool where we uh, where we will be writing the rule that how the syntax of Chinese need to be translated or converted into English. Okay, so map editor where we will be writing the map, but this translation facility is important because it will translate your data from one format to another format, right? So. In, in this case that uh, I was trying to explain you here, this your external client will send the data in the XML, XML format, but in SI, you have a translator, right? You have a translator. What this translator will do, this translator will take this XML data, okay? It will take this XML data and it will produce EDI file or the positional file that your SAP likes or that your SAP wants. Okay, so this is the use of the translation and this is very very important uh, in, in from the from from uh, middle uh, middleware uh, standpoint, right? Because most of the time I have seen that data transla uh, translation uh, uh, with most of the file. Okay. And it will happen not only uh, for the inbound files or inbound traffic, it happens for the outbound traffic or outbound files as well. Okay. So your SAP system, say suppose sends data in the EDI format, right? You need to send that file or data to your external partner. But he's saying that they need XML data. They need the data, but only and only in XML format because they do not have any capability to translate or convert that data into XML. So again, what you have to do, you have to use some translation. You have to use the translation capability of SI. So SI will take the EDI data, right? And it will 
translate that data into XML. And after converting uh, that information or data into XML, it will be sent to your external partner. So this is how this thing works. Okay. And uh, this is what translation do. Uh, your translation uh, component of SI uh, can be utilized in your uh, in uh, in running your business. Okay. Now, for this translation to happen, you have to use the map editor. And using the map editor, you will be writing the map. So, writing the map means in the map you will be defining the rule that how your Chinese or how your XML need to be converted into the EDI or in the English. Okay. So in your map editor, you will be writing that rule. Okay. So now we will see in detail that how uh, this mapping concept work and how we do the translation. But before that, Okay. Let's take a uh, simple example and today we will try to solve that simple hello world kind of application or hello world kind of problem in the map editor. Okay. So if you remember uh, in our first session we wrote a hello world business process and that is uh, how we started. Similarly in today's session we will try to write a hello world uh, map, right? And we will see how to install the map edit editor and how to do the ba very, very basic things in the map, map editor, okay? How to run a map editor, how to deploy it, things like that, okay? Okay. So, so for this activity, say suppose you have external partner, okay, who sends you XML data, okay, who sends you XML data. When I'm saying to you, it means to Sterling integrator. Hmm? And for now, I will, I will explain, I'm going to explain lot of concepts, okay, or every single concept, every single step that can, or every single feature of uh, your map editor, okay. So I will be explaining all those things using the XML, right, because the concept, the looping concept, uh, write uh, how to write the uh, uh, if condition loop condition and all those things are similar in all file format okay so I will take one file format okay and then I will explain all the concept and then we will implement the same concept in different or other uh, file formats as well okay so to start uh, this thing or to write our hello world application, let's first uh, convert or translate a hello world application. Okay. So say suppose you have your external partner who sends you, uh, who sends you an XML data. Okay. And he sends you XML data, something like A. Okay. Inside A, uh, I hope you understand uh, XML. Okay, so in XML, we have uh, we have tags. We call it these things as a tag, or we call uh, these as elements. Okay, each tag is start with uh, uh, like this. Okay, I mean the greater than sign. I mean, sorry, less than sign, greater than sign, between the less than and greater than sign, you will be writing the name of the tag. So this becomes the name of the tag or we call it as element. Okay. If, I, if an element is start, that element end as well. 
somewhere okay so say suppose like this okay so this is one xml element or xml tag between these two tag okay between these two tag you can write a text data right so this is a tag which is containing information called the hello or say suppose this tag is called username right so this will contain the name of the user something like this username jp something like this right this is so this is a uh, start tag and this is end tag xml tags right similarly you can have sometime you will see these tags or these elements contain other xml elements right something like this user slash user and sorry users user okay then inside this user tag we have user user age This guy will contain the text data or the information, right? So this is, and this thing is, this is basic principle that if a tag is start, that then that tag will, that tag ends as well somewhere. If that tag is not ending, then your XML is not correct. Okay, so something like this. So it uh, will keep going. Okay, and uh, in this case, this becomes parent tag, and this becomes child tag, uh, or all, all these are the child tag of users tag, users element. Then um, there is something called the attributes. Okay, so attributes are nothing. But it provides further more information about a about an element or about a tag. Okay, so how we write the element? We write the element something like this. So suppose you user and then length. like this this is also valid actually so we call this as an attribute and this is your tag right so this is also valid XML. if you want to can write some text data here but if your requirement is something different you can also create other text inside other tags inside this parent tag okay so these are the valid examples of xml so this is how our xml looks so now let's go back to our uh, example Say suppose this is the scenario. Huh. You have an external client who sends you XML data, right? And that XML is say suppose something like this. A. This is uh, your normal A tag. 
a tag and share right inside a you have uh, b and the value of b is hello right and then you have c This is the XML data that your client sends, right? But your XML system, or, I mean, but your internal system or your SAP system need this information, but in a different format, right? But this time, your file format is not different. File format is same. So suppose your file format is, is still XML, right? But file structure is different xml structure is different okay xml structure is different so your sap need the same information but in different structure so suppose that is a structure is something like this x okay inside x you have y y has a attribute called name okay and then uh, value of y something like this okay so your SAP system need this hello in this attribute okay and this value of value of B will go in the attribute or the value and the value of C will go as a value of Y tag so here you need to have hello okay so in fact actually if you see this is called the mapping i am saying value of b need to go in the name attribute of y and the value of c need to go as a text value of y uh, element right this is also mapping Here it will be hello word. Right. So this is our task for today we want to translate this XML format into this XML format right so uh, in this case right your file format or your uh, file struct, uh, structure for the input and output is same but data structure is different in the input you have xml right in output also you have xml right but the structure of xml is different in that case also you have to use the mapping component of si in other scenario you may have a different scenario where you will be asked to Translate this XML into a EDI file or translate this XML into a comma separated file or translate this XML into positional file that can also be scenario right and but there are a lot of concepts if you learn that in a simple XML way you can 
easily implement in other file formats as well in no time that will be easy simple okay guys so today this is what we are going to do and we are going to call this as a hello world application in order to run this hello world application you're going to learn a lot of things right so let's see how 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 we work with the map editor in si so the first thing first is we have to install map editor right if you want to use the if you want to do the mapping you need the map editor and to get the map editor uh, you have to install the map editor so let's see how we install map editor to install the map editor you have to go to the deployment okay then you have to click on the maps okay on this screen uh, on the top you can see map editor can be installed on these languages en english japanese es i don't know what is that and fr is i think french right so whatever language you understand right uh, you click on in front of it it will uh, it will uh, it will download a um, exe file right which is a normal windows exe, uh, exe file once that fi file is downloaded okay you just double click on it okay uh, to install the map editor got it i mean once you download it uh, an exe file you you have to install it as you install any other uh, software in uh, windows okay and one more thing this map editor can be run only and only on the windows right it cannot be run on the unix system or the linux system your si server itself may be running on the lean, uh, windows or uh, unix but your desktop has to be uh, map uh, windows in order to use this map editor okay you click on it you will uh, get the installation wizard and just click on next 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 uh, i will install the um, it will install the map editor right but obviously if you want to change few things you can change it as per your requirement but i do not know what you why you will do it like this one where your map editor will be installed if you want to change you can change it but i will leave it blank uh, a default so you just click on next 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 uh, so if you do that uh, this is what you will see and uh, you can see that uh, uh, installer is installing map editor in my uh, system <clears throat> click on the finish So to start the map editor, go here, all programs, right, and then click on the map editor. Okay, this will open the map editor application on your desktop. Okay, so guys, this is the map editor. This is the map editor application. Got it? And. Uh, you can use this to develop map okay now let's create that hello world application hello world map and we'll see a couple of things we'll learn a couple of things uh, in order to run that okay Now to create a map in the map editor, you have to click on the file, then you click on the new, okay. 
first what kind of map you are creating this tool provide uh, support for uh, different other products of IBM okay but uh, because we currently uh, right now we want to use this tool map editor tool to create a map that will be deployed on Sterling integrator so in the first field you will always select Sterling B2B integrator second field what is the name of map so this is where you will be writing the name of map okay so the name of map is hello world okay second what is your name this is the name of author okay you can write anything whatever you want right it does not have any uh, business significance right but it just tell that who is the developer of this particular map okay so you can write whatever name you want here but by default this is name of your windows user okay from which you have you are logged in or this uh, uh, windows user from which uh, this uh, you map editor is installed okay next click on next now there are multiple ways okay there are multiple ways to create a map okay first one is create a new data format using this standard so you can see we have these standards so what is standard and how it is used we'll talk about that later okay second load the data format from a save definition now what is this uh, we'll see about uh, we'll check about this okay maybe today only come in the last option create new data format it's saying uh, read carefully okay create new data format using this syntax which syntax this. your map editor in sterling integrator support these type of file format it supports these type of file format xml va uh, variable uh, delimited swift sql and positional and all these okay but today our requirement is what is our requirement we will get some data in xml format and we need to translate that data again in the xml format so our my our or my file format is xml okay so here i have to select the xml got it if you look at this uh, uh, wizard you will see it says input format okay once you enter the name of the map and other details that uh appears on the first screen and you click on the next in this screen you will be asked you will be asked to provide input format okay see if you are creating a map right you have to have two formats right two parties have to involve input this is your input this is your output right this is Chinese input this is English output got it so this is your input format click on next now I mean when I started learning on uh, learning this uh, tool some eight year back right it was literally very confusing for me that why I'm entering the same information twice, right? Once you uh, may, uh, write, type the name of uh, map, you select some information on this field, 
and if, once you click on the next you will be asked to provide the same information again right but the, there is a difference the difference is first you provide the information of your file format for the input side then you provide the file format uh, of your output side so this one is xml again okay click on next and then finish once you click on the finish a up editor opens okay okay this is actually your map editor okay and this is a file okay like your for the english you have microsoft word microsoft word is editor for the english similarly and you create a file to write the, your stories or your comments and whatever you want in the same way this is the map editor right and you just now created a file right and because it's a map file right because it's a map file mapping file it has to have input side and the output side input side and the output side right fortunately or unfortunately in our case my input side format is xml and the output side format is also an xml so this is what you can see right input output you got it okay hmm. now on this side you will start defining your input structure on the output side you have to define your output structure once it, your input structure is ready your output structure is ready you can go ahead and start doing the mapping right mapping where you will define how the input should be converted into the output but before you do that you need to have a structure input structure and the output structure okay if you remember input structure should be look like this means in the input structure expectation is you will have a tag called the a right then inside the a tag you will have a tag called the b b tag will have capability to hold the data similarly a another child of b a will be c and c will also have capability to hold the data right so let's create the input structure and you see how i'm creating it a a okay this is my a element or a tag inside this a tag i have another element element called the b b do you see this this is what, this is what i have b hmm? this is a b element a b tag right i mean see i could take another file format another xml some complex uh, uh, example of item master or prize master or some edi format and i could explain this to you but that does not make sense because for me you do not know anything in the map editor this is the first time you are going to look at the map editor so i have to explain you in a most simplest way and simplest way which is possible on the earth okay so that is why i have taken this waste weird example right in your life entire life you will never see this but there are a few basic concepts to understand this or to understand those concepts you have to learn this thing okay 
Hmm? So you you got A and you got B, B element like this. Now the important thing is B element can hold a text value, right? B element can hold a text data. So how you will do that? To create an element, you need to create or you need to select the element. Okay. If you want, if your element holds or has capability to hold data to indicate or to donate, uh, denote uh, that, to indicate that we create PC data in map editor. Okay. We create PC data like this. Okay. Once you click on uh, the PC data, it will ask you, okay, you want to create a, create a uh, bucket or something that will hold text data value. Okay. So if that is the case, tell me about it. Okay. So in this field, I mean, in this skin, there is, I mean, lot of things that we'll discuss later. Okay. But for now, say suppose 50. So minimum length that can be stored in this is something between zero to 50. It cannot hold more um, data or uh, uh, whose length is more than 50. Okay, so this is if that is what I want to define, then this is you have you you have to define in the map editor. Okay, click on okay. Got it. So. Once we did this, or once we do that, we have completed this part, B part. Now come to the C. Create sub. Now the C element is a basically child of A, right? It's not the child of B. Right. So if we create the sub element, if we click uh, do like this, create sub element, then C will become or the next element will become the child of B. We do not want to do that. We want to do insert, right? Insert element. Which element? C element. Or tag with the value C. Or oh, sorry, with the name C. Now here you can see A is the parent become the becomes a parent tag a have b tag and the c tag okay so 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 this is how you create you will create c so c element is ready c again has capability to store text data so how you will how you will do Create sub PC data 50 like this. Okay. Once you do this, I will say your input format is ready for the testing. Or, uh, I will see your input, input format is ready. Now, in the same way, I also have to create output format as well. So my output format says X, inside X I have Y and then Y has an attribute called the name and Y will hold the text data. Property. Then you will uh, get Y. Okay. Sub element X. Sorry, it was X. X will have Y. Y. Okay. This is your Y. 
okay y has attribute okay name of attribute is name name type is um, c data face length is okay and uh, 50 is string okay so it has a attribute and it also has a pc data which will hold the actual value like this okay so this is my this is what this is my output format this is input format this is output format got it this is input format right and this is output format simple so if you follow this kind of pattern you can create complex to complex xml structure okay but actually you will you do not have to create xml structure like this there are other ways to create a structure right so the xsd or dtt or some other ways right you i mean i don't think you will you ever have to create xml structure but you need to know if you ever have to then how you will do because if you know that it will make your life very easy and it will help you understanding lot and lot of concepts hmm? so now to start with my input and output format is ready right this is my input format this is my output format right now time to do mapping now it's the time to do mapping okay mapping is the process in the map editor where we link input side to the output side and we write the rules condition and all other things that basically determine how input data should be translated to output data okay in si mapping is very simple right to do or to start mapping you just click on this uh, icon and that says toggle link mode click on this and you first select the input side which you want to link to output side with which you want to link the input side okay so value of b need to go to where it need to go so value of b need to be the attribute value of y right see well this is the value of b it need to be the value of attribute so i will start click on this input side link and then i will click on here this is how i have to do right because i want the value of b to go in the attribute value of y which is name similarly value of c need to go need to be the need to become the value of y right that's it this is the mapping so you created the input format you created the output format now you just now uh, accomplish the mapping as well wow it was easy right file save next thing is you need to save your file okay so we are uh, we completed the one is one step now we are moving to the step number two save the file 
Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. So What I just now did is no. this is my source code. This is my source map. SI map editor allow you to save the source in two format. Okay, dot map and other is dot mxl, right? I was not able to save my source code. Source code means input side and the output side in mxl format uh, because I do not have a, uh, I mean, to save the uh, so map editor source code in dot mxl, you need a dot uh, net uh, XML package installed in your system. If you do not have that installed in your system, you cannot uh, save the uh, uh, your map in the .mxl. But it does not matter, right? So I, you can al always save your map in .map format. So because I uh, do not have that specific uh, .NET uh, component installed in my uh, system, so I saved saved the source code of map in the dot map format hmm? so this is what you see here right i'm no longer doing any mapping so i will click on this again to come back to the non-mapping uh, state so you did a lot right so you install the map editor you create the input format create the output format you have linked it as well now what next? Next is you need to compile this map. Okay, you have to compile this map. Okay, now how to compile this map? compile map? Okay. To compile map, you need to click on this icon, compile. Okay. You need to click on this uh, option compile right once you click on it your map editor will tell you to choose the directory where you want to save the compiled map file okay compiled map file okay so that right now i will select the default folder okay when you compile your source code or your source map your edi editor or your map editor okay checks the or validate your source code validating the source code means it checks whether the code that <coughs> you wrote in the map is correct or not Okay, it does not run to check your business logic. It just check the syntax error. Okay, syntax error means I hope you understand the syntax errors, right? But if you do not understand the syntax error, syntax errors means if I take example of English, right? In English, there is a rule that says end of every uh, sentence, right? You need to use dot a period right and if you're writing something and you want and you want to give a small pause you need to use comma okay the spelling of hello is h e l l o right but say suppose somebody do not 
So when when you compile your program, right, your compiler will check these kind of things, right? What kind of thing? If all sen uh, sentences are ending with the semicolon or uh, I mean the with period or not, with the dot or not, if there is a small uh, pause, uh, it's ending with the semicolon or not, all the spellings are right or not, right? When you compile your program, this is what, what your compiler check, right? But now say suppose if somebody has forget to add this uh, period or add the comma or uh, he has read, uh, wrote wrong spelling of hello, then your compiler will give you error or generate error stating you or telling you that there are some fundamental problem in your code. Your code cannot be compiled. But if you do not have any syntax error, everything you have uh, uh, written uh, following all the basic principle of map editor or the language, then your code will be successfully compiled. Okay. So this is what uh, compiling process uh, does in the map editor, right? And once again, I will explain tell you when I'm saying that it checks for the error. It does not run your map and it does not check any business logic. Okay. It does not if you if I talk about in English language, your map editor does not or will not check that what you want to try to say. Right. If you if you are using any abusive language in, in, in the in your statement or in your uh, sentence map editor will not check that it will not tell you that you should not use uh, abusive language when you are sending email to your your senior it will not tell you that but in the in that abusive language if there is a uh, spelling mistake it will tell you that right so these type of error we call the syntax error if you forget the semicolon, if you forget the comma, if you forget the uh, period at the end of each syntax, uh, sentence, the map editor will catch that and will tell you to correct it. If you, once you resolve uh, and or solve all the syntax errors in your program, your code will be compiled, right? When your code is, code is successfully compiled, your map editor creates a dot txo file for you okay it creates a dot txo file okay and uh, as you can see here compiling loop a compiling loop x and then compilation completes zero error and zero warning okay this is what you want to see all the time every time okay. but if there was uh, if there were any error it will show those that are here on this screen okay you can click on okay so guys what you just now did mm, you did a lot right you have uh, compile your code so next step next step is to run this code okay actually your map code will be run in the sterling integrator right it will be run in between a business logic in your business uh, business process right? that is how it will be done in the real world scenario but before you check in your code in the sterling integrator right before you, before you check in your code in the sterling integrator you have to test right you have to at least run one or twice to make sure that your map is working as expected right you have to test it you have to make sure that it is working or it's translating the data as expected right now to run this map right to run this map you need input file format you need the data right that need that will be translated to output format 
you, th then only your mapping thing will work, right? You have a data that you need to translate into some other format. That is the reason you, you did all this drama, right? Now, your drama is complete. Now you want to test. So you want to test. If you want to test, if you want to actually run it, then we have to check in all this code, uh, source file and the compile file and all those things in the SI. But before I check in the code in SI and run through my end-to-end -end business process, I want to test it. I want to do unit testing just to make sure that everything is working as expected. Right. So to test this, you need an input, input file, input data. Right. So <coughs> now we need input. input data so let's create input data okay in input data i am expecting a tag called a which is the parent tag inside the parent tag i have b I have a B. We will holding some text value. Then I will have C and C will be holding some text value. Right? Like this. B and then C. Right? Okay. Let's do that. B. Hello. C. right this is my input file got it this is my input file input file is ready and I'm ready to test my map okay let's do that To do that, you have to click on the map test. To do what? To test the map. Click on this. Okay. Next. Now, what is this? okay i will explain this i will explain you in detail that what is the significance and why you are writing something like this okay but for now you just remember this is the ip address or the host name of your server or the machine where your sterling integrator is installed okay where your sterling integrator is install I'm using localhost because my map editor and SI is running on the same system I can also use 127.0.0.1 or I can also use the IP address of my system right IP address of my system means 192.168.1.1 I can also use that here. Hmm? Next. Next is port number. Okay. Next is port number. Port number that you need to specify here is the port on which your map editor web service is running listen what i'm saying this is the port number in your system on which your map editor web service is running and now what is this 
I will explain you tomorrow. Okay. By default, this port is calculated by adding 33 on your base port. Okay, by adding 33 on your base port. Now, what is the base port? Base port is the port number on which you access your dashboard. Okay, in my case, I access dashboard on port number 50,000. Right? So, map editor web service will run on 50,000 plus 33. So, it will become 50,033. So this is the reason and this is the story of this, right? But why this port? That is something very interested that we need to know, right? And we will know soon. Next, SI user ID password, okay? Because I use admin, I will use admin user ID and password is password. Okay, and come to the next field. Next field is translation object and data file. Now, what is a translation object? Translation object is <coughs> .txo file. Now, what is the .txo file? From where you get this file? You remember we compiled our source code this was our source code source code right then we compiled it on and our compiler has done the syntax validation for us if when he found and we when he was happy then he created and and there was no syntax error then he created a then he compiled our source code and created a file with the file format dot txt and we call that file as a compiled map file. This is compiled map file. Okay. Remember, each time when you change something in the map, okay, if you change something in the map, you have to compile your map and generate a .txo file. Okay. Select this .txo. So in this field. This is what you have to provide. Come to the next. What is this? It says data file. Okay. In the real world scenario, when you will be running this map or this kind of translation, you have a we have a service called the translation service. Okay. Translation service takes the data from the primary document. Right. But here you have to provide the data file. Right, so let's go and select the data file. So I just now created the data file, and I think I created the data file here in the source map. Right, so input file. Click on the input file like this. Okay, so I hope you understand all the fields here server name, uh, server address, user ID, password, then txo file and then your input file right then click on the run test right actively refused it okay why it refused it i do not know let me try with this okay so due to some reason, my SI is down. My SI is not running. Okay. My Sterling integrator is not running. So, I mean, in your case, when you will try, it will work. Okay. Trust me, it will work. It's not working because my virtual machine, this SI is running in a virtual machine and this virtual machine is, is almost dead. It has a very uh, small amount of memory and that uh, memory gets filled up very fast and uh, and then stops working.
some error has happened. Okay, this is okay, mean So some error has happened in my system because of that SI stopped working. So I'm trying to find out that what may be the error. And uh, I'm not sure if I will restart this, it will work. Okay. Uh, let me try to restart it okay once okay so <clears throat> I have restarted my system now let's try everything is uh, selected already password is uh, password. password and this is this okay click on run test okay so now I want to tell you one more thing this map okay so to test this map we gave a input file and then map editor uh, runs map against the input file and uh, it has successfully translated okay now i just want to correct one thing actually your map editor does not runs your map okay your map is basically run by sterling integrator always okay now how it happens i will explain you in the next session okay there is a web service call and then your map editor pass all your source uh, map and uh, TXO and the input file to Sterling integrator and then two things happens there and uh, I will explain that concept as well but if you see here in SI dashboard okay this service this BP sorry okay Click on the current process and you will see this uh, BP called the map test. This is the BP that has executed, okay, your uh, map. Click on it, see. Here is your data. Do you see this input file and then this is HTTP server adapter which uh, has accepted the all the data and here is your response that is after you this BP has run the uh, translator service and then it has sent the response http response back to your uh, map editor okay primary document see here okay but anyways we will see uh, this si part again in the detail but 
look at this this is your translated output okay translated xml output right now see everything is in one line i do not like it at least in case of the xml i need a uh, well formatted xml so i make uh, some i change some property file and again see i have changed a property right in the map editor right so i change this property i'm asking it to create a proper intended uh, xml uh, output file for me right so i have to compile this file again else my changes will not be reflected okay it will not be applicable so click on it, this compile option and click on save replace and then okay okay and now click on this and then click on run again okay so each time when you run the map editor it opens this uh, web page okay in this web page you will see if there is any runtime error okay if there is any runtime error but right now there is no error so there is uh, you do not see any detail here this is the output file or this is the translated file and if you see this is exactly what we are trying to achieve right input hello hello this hello should go in the attribute of name and the value of you should uh, go inside the uh, as a value of y element x x y y has an attribute called the name this is the value of name attribute and this is your hello okay if you see the input file You will understand it better. And where is my output file? Or oh, did I close it? Ah, bad. Okay. Okay. So this is your input file. This is your output file. See, value of B has come in the has become the name a value of name attribute and the value of c has come in the uh, has up, uh, come as a value of y uh, y elements y tag right this is what we wanted to achieve and this is my friend this is hello world of map editor okay so now from next session we will start uh, looking into uh, other important and advanced concepts and i'm telling you i will be covering each and every single topic that is available in the map editor in detail right and we will be doing all practical sessions we will implement everything and i will explain you every single concept that is available in map editor okay and uh, 
because we are here okay let's uh, let me tell you uh, show one more thing uh, that is important which is important right so that will cover uh, our entire hello world uh, program so you saw how to create the map how to create uh, how to compile it and how to run that that map in Ma uh, through the map editor right but if you want to run this map or this translation through a business process in your business process somewhere you have to use translation service right translation service in the translation service you have to provide the name of your map right now your translation service needs the TXO file, I mean the compiled code and the source code of your map in the SI. So, friends, as we have learned how to and uh, how we check in BPML code in the SI dashboard in Sterling Integrator, similarly, we have to check in map code also in the SI dashboard in Sterling Integrator. Now, let's see how to do that, how to check in the map. To check in the map code, you have to click on the deployment and then click on the maps. Hmm. Then click on this option, check in. Click on go. Hmm. In the first field, you have to click on the map file. Uh, uh, you have to uh, click on the browse option and you have to select source code of your map so, so, so the source code of my map is placed here right hello world dot map select this then it is asking you to select the compiled map so compiled map is in the compile map folder okay so you select this txo uh, file hello dot txo write a comment click on next and click on finish this is how you will check in or deploy if you do not understand uh, check in then you can consider as deploy this is how you will deploy your map in SI dashboard in Sterling Integrator. Okay. So I think that's it uh, for today. Let's meet tomorrow and uh, we'll discuss other things. Okay. Okay. Chalo. Yeah. yeah.